Have you ever wondered why a man stops chasing you? It's a question we've all asked at some point, isn't it? In the vast labyrinth of human relationships, it's quite common to find ourselves at the crossroads, pondering why the chase has suddenly stopped. It's confusing, it's frustrating, and it can leave us feeling quite vulnerable. But fear not, because this video is designed to help you navigate through these murky waters. We're going to delve deep into the reasons why a man might stop pursuing, and more importantly, we'll explore what you can do when you find yourself in such a situation. We're going to discuss how to understand the situation, reflect on the relationship, communicate openly, focus on personal growth, seek professional help, and know when to move on. Stay tuned as we unpack these issues and provide some practical advice on how to navigate this tricky situation. Before we dive into solutions, it's crucial to understand why this might be happening. The truth is, there could be a myriad of reasons why a man may stop pursuing you. Sometimes it's not about you at all, but more about what's going on in his life. For starters, he might be feeling overwhelmed by other aspects of his life. Let's face it, life can get complicated. There could be work stress, family issues, or personal challenges that are demanding his attention. When these things pile up, they can take a toll on his ability to focus on a relationship. Another possibility is that he might be feeling pressured. When a relationship moves too quickly, it can create a sense of pressure that some people find difficult to handle. He might be pulling back because he needs space to breathe and assess his feelings. Or perhaps he's simply lost interest. It happens. The initial spark might have faded or he may have realized that the two of you aren't as compatible as he initially thought. It's not necessarily a reflection on you. Sometimes the chemistry just isn't there. It's also worth considering that he might be dealing with personal insecurities or fears. Fear of commitment, fear of rejection, or even fear of not being good enough can all lead a man to retreat. This can be particularly true if he's been hurt in the past. Lastly, he might have met someone else. It's a harsh reality. But sometimes people's affections shift. It doesn't mean you're not amazing. It just means his feelings have changed. Remember, understanding the why is just as important as knowing what to do next. It's about gaining insight into the situation so you can make informed decisions and take actions that serve your best interests. Now that we've explored the possible reasons, let's move on to what you can do about it. The first thing to do when a man stops chasing is to reflect on the relationship. When we talk about reflecting on the relationship, we're not just talking about a quick skim through your memories. We're talking about a deep, introspective look at the dynamics, the interactions, and the feelings that were present throughout the course of your relationship. Self-reflection is a vital tool in our emotional toolbox. It allows us to understand our feelings, our actions, and our reactions. It's like a mirror that shows us not just who we are, but also how we've been shaped by our experiences. When it comes to relationships, self-reflection helps us to understand what we enjoyed, what we didn't, and what we might want to look for in future relationships. Evaluating the quality of the relationship is just as important. It's easy to get caught up in the nostalgia of the good times, but it's crucial to also remember the not-so-good times Look at the relationship holistically. Was it balanced? Was it fulfilling? Did it bring out the best in you and in him? These are the questions you need to ask yourself. Finally, consider whether the relationship aligned with your personal needs and expectations. Did you feel loved, respected, and valued? Were your needs met, your boundaries respected? Did the relationship bring you closer to your personal goals or did it pull you away from them? Reflection is not about assigning blame or wallowing in what could have been. It's about learning from our experiences, understanding our patterns, and making informed choices about our future. It's about taking the time to understand what we truly want and need from our relationships. So take the time to reflect. Reflect on the good, the bad, and everything in between. Reflect on the lessons learned, the growth experienced, and the love shared. Remember, reflection is a key step in understanding the situation and determining your next course of action. Once you've reflected on the relationship, the next step is to communicate openly. Now, 
This is a crucial step. It's the cornerstone of any healthy relationship, romantic or otherwise. It's the bridge that connects two individuals, allowing them to share their thoughts, feelings, and concerns. It's the key to understanding and being understood. Let's first look at the importance of open communication. You see, when we communicate openly, we create an environment where both parties feel safe and comfortable to express themselves. It's about creating a space of non-judgment where you can both be honest and vulnerable. This kind of openness can foster trust, deepen emotional connection, and ultimately strengthen the bond between you. But how do you communicate openly? Well, it starts with expressing your feelings and concerns. It's not just about talking, it's about sharing. Share your feelings, your fears, your hopes, your dreams. Share your concerns. Are you feeling neglected? Are you feeling unloved? Are you feeling insecure? Whatever it is, voice it out. Remember, it's not about blaming or accusing. It's about expressing how you feel. It's about being honest with yourself and with your partner. Now, expressing your feelings is one thing, but understanding the other person's perspective is another. It's a two-way street. Open communication is not just about speaking, it's about listening, it's about understanding, it's about empathy. When the other person is speaking, listen, truly listen. Try to understand their point of view, their feelings, their concerns. This is not about agreeing or disagreeing. This is about understanding. It's also important to remember that communication doesn't always involve words. Sometimes it's about actions. It's about the little things, the way you look at each other, the way you touch, the way you spend time together. These are all forms of communication. They're all ways of expressing love, appreciation, and affection. But what if the other person is not open to communication? What if they are not willing to listen or understand? Well, that's a challenge. But remember, you can only control your actions, not the other person's. So keep doing your part. Keep expressing, keep listening, keep understanding. And hopefully with time, they will reciprocate. And lastly, remember communication is a skill. It's something you can learn and improve it may be difficult at first, especially if you're not used to it, but with practice, you can become better. You can become more open, more expressive, more understanding. And as you do, your relationship will also become better. Effective communication can often help resolve misunderstandings and rekindle interest. So don't underestimate its power. Don't shy away from it. Embrace it. Practice it. And watch as it transforms your relationship into something more beautiful more meaningful, and more fulfilling. While it's important to communicate, it's equally crucial to focus on personal growth. Now, this might sound a bit self-centered, but hear me out. You see, when we talk about personal growth, we're not advocating for selfishness or isolation. Instead, we're emphasizing the importance of becoming the best version of yourself for your own sake and for the sake of those around you. Think about it this way. When you're in a relationship, you're basically two individuals sharing a life together. But that doesn't mean you stop being individuals. You each have unique passions, interests, and ambitions, things that make you who you are. And it's important to nourish these aspects of your personality, even when you're part of a couple. So, how do you focus on personal growth? Well, there are several ways. First, consider your interests. What are the things you love doing? Are there hobbies you've been meaning to pick up or skills you've been wanting to learn? Now's the perfect time to pursue them. And who knows, you might discover a passion you never knew you had. Next, think about your career. Are you satisfied with where you are or do you aspire for more? If it's the latter, consider ways to improve. This could mean taking up further studies, attending workshops, or simply asking for feedback and striving to do better. Remember, growth in your professional life can greatly contribute to your personal growth as well. And finally, don't forget about your health, both physical and mental. Regular exercise, a balanced diet, and adequate sleep can greatly improve your overall well-being. Similarly, taking care of your mental health is just as important. This can involve anything from meditation and mindfulness to therapy and counseling. Now you might be wondering, what does all this have to do with a man chasing me? Well, here's the thing. When you focus on personal growth, you're essentially investing in yourself. 
you're becoming more independent, more confident, and more attractive, not just to others, but to yourself as well. And this can do wonders for your relationships. You see, when you're content and fulfilled as an individual, you bring that positivity into your relationships. You're less likely to rely on others for your happiness and more likely to contribute to theirs. And this in turn can make you more appealing to others, including the man who might have stopped chasing you. But remember, the goal here isn't to make someone else chase you. Rather, it's to become a person you'd be proud to chase. It's about becoming someone who knows their worth, who respects themselves, and who isn't afraid to pursue their dreams. Because at the end of the day, the most important relationship you have is with yourself. And so, as we navigate through the complexities of relationships, let's not forget to focus on our personal growth. Personal growth not only attracts others, but also enhances your own self-esteem and happiness. If things don't seem to improve, don't hesitate to seek professional help. This is a crucial step that many of us often overlook, almost always to our own disadvantage. Imagine, you've tried to understand the situation, you've reflected on the relationship, had open conversations, and even focused on personal growth. But what if things still aren't quite right? What if the tension persists? Well, that's where professional help comes in. Professional help can take many forms, but in the context of relationships, we're talking about relationship counselors or therapists. These are folks who have spent years studying the intricate dynamics of human relationships. They are trained to understand the nuanced, often complex emotions that govern our interactions. The benefits of seeking professional help are manifold. First and foremost, it provides an unbiased third-party perspective. Sometimes, it's hard to see the forest for the trees when you're in the middle of a situation. A relationship counselor can help you step back and see the bigger picture. Second, counselors can provide specific strategies and tools to help navigate your relationship issues. They can guide you in identifying unhealthy patterns of behavior and provide strategies to break those patterns. They can help you communicate more effectively, set boundaries, and navigate conflict. Third, Seeking professional help can also be a great source of emotional support. It can be incredibly validating to have someone acknowledge your feelings and experiences. This can also help reduce feelings of isolation and loneliness that often come with relationship struggles. Finally, therapists can also help you work through any underlying issues that may be affecting your relationships. This could be anything from past traumas to mental health issues. So if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling like you're running in circles, don't be afraid to reach out to a professional. It's not a sign of weakness, but of strength. It shows you're committed to growth, both personal and relational. Never underestimate the power of professional help in navigating complex relationship issues. It might just be the step that turns everything around. Finally, it's essential to know when to move on. This isn't about giving up or admitting defeat. It's about acknowledging that sometimes, despite our best efforts, a relationship just isn't meant to be. Understanding when it's time to move on can be one of the most challenging aspects of navigating relationships. It requires a level of self-awareness and emotional maturity that isn't always easy to summon. It's about recognizing that a relationship isn't beneficial. Perhaps it's causing more pain than joy, or it's stunting your personal growth. Sometimes we hold on because we fear being alone or we're concerned about what others might think. But it's crucial to remember that you owe it to yourself to be in a relationship that brings you happiness and fulfillment. Being in a relationship should not feel like a struggle or a constant uphill battle. It's also important to understand that moving on doesn't mean you failed. It's a sign of strength, a testament to your resilience. It shows that you value yourself enough to say, I deserve better. Moving on might mean different things to different people. For some, it might mean taking a break from dating altogether to focus on personal growth. For others, it might mean starting over, meeting new people, and opening up to the possibility of a new relationship. It's not about rushing into the next relationship or trying to fill a void. It's about taking the time to heal, to reflect on what you've learned from the experience and to use that knowledge to build healthier relationships in the future. Moving on is not a linear process. 
There will be good days and there will be tough days. But with time, the tough days will get fewer and the good days will start to outnumber them. So, if you find yourself in a relationship that isn't serving you, have the courage to acknowledge it. Listen to your gut, trust your instincts. You are stronger than you think and you have the power to choose what's best for you. Remember, moving on isn't a sign of failure, but a step towards finding a relationship that truly fulfills you. To wrap up, dealing with a man who stops chasing can be difficult, but it's not impossible. We've covered a lot of ground today, so let's quickly recap. It all begins with understanding the situation. Take a step back, analyze what's happening, and try to get a clear picture of where things stand. Next, reflect on the relationship, what worked, what didn't. These insights can be invaluable in shaping your future interactions. Then, we discuss the importance of open communication. It's key to resolving misunderstandings and expressing your feelings in a healthy way. We also emphasize the role of personal growth. Use this as an opportunity to focus on yourself to learn and grow. Sometimes you may need to seek professional help to navigate through the emotional turmoil. And lastly, know when to move on. It's crucial to recognize when a situation is no longer serving your best interests. Remember, every situation is unique and it's important to do what's best for you. Thanks for watching and we hope you found this video helpful.